Welcome to the Monday Daily Devotional of New Life Community Church of the Nazarene. As you can tell, Pastor Kurt is not here today. He's taking a break this week to do other things. I'm Pastor Tom, and I will be presenting the devotionals this week. Before very long, we are going to be able to meet as a church in our building again. That's why I've called this week's devotionals, Devotions for Better Times. After weeks of being at home, many of you are ready to get back as soon as possible. Most of us spend a lot of time staying at home. Some of you were ready to go screaming out the window. That was a real problem because you may not have lived on the first floor of your building. The good news is that you have more freedom to get out now. But not everyone was bothered by being home. I have found that there are three types of people in the world. There are the extroverts. These are the people who have suffered the most by being cooped up in their homes. Then there are the introverts. They think alone time is good. They are blissfully happy staying at home. Finally, there are the curmudgeons. That's a technical term for grumpy old men. The curmudgeons are not only happy staying at home, but they hope that social distancing will last forever. They also smile contentedly as they ignore the extroverts who go screaming out the window. Well, for the extroverts among you, there is good news. We will not be stuck in our homes forever. Pastor Kurt has been making plans to reopen. In fact, he has already rearranged the sanctuary. He has taken out about half the chairs and has arranged them so that there is six feet of space between rows and more space in the aisles. We are looking forward to welcoming everyone back to the church building. We just don't know when that will be. But some of you, especially the introverts and the curmudgeons, have been watching the videos from our church and other churches, and you may be thinking, hmm, Pastor Kurt has been doing his usual great job of preaching. But by staying home, I can also watch David Jeremiah, Charles Stanley, Andy Stanley, Joel Osteen, or even Billy Graham reruns. Yes, they are available on YouTube. Why do I need to go to church when I can stay home and watch as much good preaching as I want? And I can worship at home, or in the desert, or the mountains. Why do I need to go to church to worship? Hmm, those are good questions, and there is some truth in them. But there is more to coming to church than hearing preaching or even worshiping. Have you ever stubbed your toe? (laughs) Yeah, that hurts. I once, no, it was actually twice, broke one of my little toes. Please do not ask me how that happened. Telling you would be too embarrassing and too painful. Now that toe is a very small part of my body. But after I broke it, I couldn't run very well or walk very well. I limped, I hurt. That little toe became the most important part of my body, and it let me know it. The Apostle Paul paints a very strange picture of the church in 1 Corinthians. If you want to read along, I will be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, starting at verse 12. This is what it says. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one Spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one Spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. He pictures the church as a body. It has many parts, but they all come together to form one body. And, like my little toe, every part is important. He goes on to say, starting in verse 15, Now if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. So the church is like a body. It has many parts, and every part is important. You can't see without eyes. You can't walk without feet. What does that mean in the church? Paul gives some examples of what it means to be a foot or an eye or a hand. At the end of chapter 12, he talks about some of the gifts of the Spirit that people may exercise in the church. 
That list includes apostles, prophets, and teachers. But he also offers another list in Romans chapter 12, beginning at verse 5. And I want to consider that list. In Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. These are not complete lists of gifts, but they give us an idea of how we are to work together. You will notice that gifts such as prophets or preachers and teachers have more to do with leadership in the church, while gifts such as serving, encouraging, giving, and showing mercy are for any believer. The truth is that you are right that you can get good preaching and teaching on television. Not as good as Pastor Kurt, but it's okay. Sometimes you can even worship without being together. But teaching, preaching, and worship are only part of what it means to be in church. Every believer receives gifts from the Holy Spirit, and every believer is called to use those gifts to serve others in the church. You can't serve or get encouragement, giving, and mercy on television. Well, it is true that some of those television preachers will be happy if you give to them. But the main thing is that you can't serve, give, encourage, or show mercy, really, when you are home alone. It is only when we come together that we have opportunities to do those things. We are simply incomplete when we are not meeting together. We are not able to use our spiritual gifts. The body of Christ is incomplete. We cannot be one body if we are not together. It is not a body if a foot is hopping down the middle of Prince, or an eyeball is rolling along Speedway. Even knees kneeling in the church building for prayer aren't doing much if the rest of the body isn't there. The church, the body, is just not the body if we are not together. We are incomplete. Let's pray. Father God, we have been apart for a long time, and many of us feel the pain. We pray that you will unite, reunite us soon and that you will help us experience the unity for which you have designed us. Thank you for the leadership in our church. Thank you for the preaching and teaching. But even more than that, when we meet together, we thank you that we can serve, encourage, and give, and show mercy. Help us to do that. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I pray that the rest of your day will be blessed. Keep looking forward to the time when we can come together again. But be patient. It may be a while. In the meantime, look for ways to encourage, serve, show mercy, and give. Even though we are not together, there are still opportunities.